you know what I've learned I've learned so much from my loss to aerospace than I've learned in all my wins yeah yeah it's funny and, how that works and you know I'm a guy that lives with this if, if you take anything from me today take this and a lot of people in this world miss the opportunity of success in life only only because they are afraid of taking risks in life and I came to a foreign country and the world knows about me the fighting world knows about me because of my risks and now I'm going to go to the topic of Colin McGregor. So listen to this. I just I went I went to to South Africa after I won a, I, I, I fought a main event in April of 2016 last year on Roy Jones' show in Las Vegas on CBS Sport. I was the main event. Sure. I came in as an underdog. I beat Roy Jones' fighter of a 10 round decision. I haven't seen my family for over a year. Decided mm. to jump the plane, go back to South Africa, and, and go on holiday. Mm. I did that for one month. I didn't put my hands in the gym. I didn't put a glove on my hand. I was I was enjoying my family, and I came back to America one month later, and I landed from uh, I landed from a twenty seven hour flight, and I went to the gym to say hello to the guys, and the next moment people stayed there. My my friends in the gym they were like, "Are oh, you in a rush?" I said, "I'm not in a rush. Why?" I said, there's someone that wants to see you. Can you hold on for like 10 minutes? I said, absolutely. And the next moment, Conor McGregor walks into the gym. Wow. And, um, you know, very, uh, you know, I'm, uh, one thing I want you to know about me is I, I call a spade a spade. I mm. don't turn stories. I don't tell, say what, I, what, what, what people want to hear. I talk to two. <laughs> and, and when I met Conor McGregor, Conor was awesome you know he was such a gentleman what a nice guy and he asked me you know he said i believe you're a south pole um i said yes he says um do you mind giving me a few rounds i'm i'm in i'm in santa monica for the next or two 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 to three weeks do you mind moving around with me but i knew it was for the nate diaz rematch the nate diaz mcgregor rematch that's why they right. south pole but right at that very instant. That is when the talks between Conor McGregor and Mayweather was surfacing. Uh, so when Conor approached me and asked me if I want to move around with him, this is where that factor comes in where you say a lot of people miss the opportunity of success because they're afraid of risks. Now this is the risk I took. I just landed from a 27 hour flight. I'm jet lagged. I'm tired. I'm out of shape. I haven't been in a gym for a month. I'm not in, not in a fighting shape. But if I'm going to move around with Conor today, the whole world is going to want to know who's this guy that Conor McGregor is working with. Mm -hmm. So I knew to take, I knew to jump on this opportunity because this is the way I'm going to get my name out of here. So the risk I took was I can get beat up by Conor because I didn't know nothing about him really coming to his boxing. I knew who he was, but it's still a risk. He's a big boy. Let me tell you that. Mm. He's bigger than me. Mm. And, um, and, and so when Connor said, do you mind moving around? I said, absolutely. When do you want to move around? He said, tomorrow. Well, I said, absolutely. Let's do it. I went home. I put on my running shoes. And I went for a for 10-mile run just to, just to get some, you know, just to get some fitness. You know? Yeah, yeah, of course. And, and that's it. You know, people, we had two sparring sessions behind doors, me and Connor. And the first sparring session was, um, was a little bit more interesting because it was more genuine in the sense of I wanted to, you know, there's a thing between fighters we call you know, we gotta, we gotta we got, I've got, I wanna dominate and he wanted to dominate, so we gotta win in respect for each other and Ooh. I gotta win in his respect, so you know what I can't play around, I gotta, I gotta let my hands go a little bit, so the first part is just, no one saw that, it's it's, it's not on tape, but it was, I, you know, I cut Conor McGregor's nose. He was bleeding from the nose. But then, you know, we became friends and it was really cool. And he said, do you mind moving around with me again in two days' time? I said, absolutely, Conor. I said, um, you know, I'm not going to charge you one dime because I knew what I was doing. I said, I don't want to mm -hmm. be paid because I know my name is going to get out of there. I'm, I'm doing you a favor, so let's do it. And then the second sparring session, he had his camera people there. And his people were forming it. But at the same time, when I saw his people forming it, I had my friend recorded on the cell phone just for backup. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, so, but, but I want people to know this because people need to know this. I didn't do nothing wrong. I didn't, I didn't 
do Connor bad. They did me bad. Why? Because listen to this. Right before the sparring session, the gym owners and Connor McGregor and his team, they asked me, do you mind if we put footage out from the sparring today? I said, I directly said to them, I said, I want nothing out. I said, please no, because you know what? I'm just here to move around with you. I'm not in fighting shape. Let's just, you know, let's just move around. And and they acknowledged it. And they were like, absolutely, absolutely. We understand nothing will come out. And the gym owner still asked me, do you mind if I send this to TMZ? And I said, absolutely not. I said, don't. Mm. I said, whatever you do, don't send nothing. I don't mm. want any footage out. And they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's fair. We won't do that. So mm. we sparred. And it was, like I said, this was the second session. So it was, there was more respect. And we fooled around. I fooled around. Kind of fooled around. But I was still dominating. Wow. I went home. Listen to the scary spot. I went home, jumped in the shower, and 30 minutes later, my phone went crazy. Berserk. And I, and, I, and I looked at it, and I saw all these tweets and stuff from TMZ. And, and I looked, and I saw it was the footage of the sparring. And I, and I phoned the gym owners and everyone. I tried for getting all of Conor McGregor's manager. And I was like, listen, you guys, how did TMZ get the footage? And they were like, oh, no, we just sent them to them. I said, but I told you no. I said, what? no, but Conor McGregor and his team, uh, they approved it. I said, but I said, no. I said, I, I directly said no. Yeah. And then Conor McGregor and his team, now people need to know this. I, at this point, I didn't do anything. Conor McGregor went and his team, Mac Life, they mm-hmm. went and edited footage and it made it look like he was beating me up. Mm. And they put it out there. So you can understand for me, from my point, as a fighter coming from South Africa, coming to America, trying to make it, all of a sudden all this bad publicity is out with Conor McGregor is beating me up and people are they edited like that and, of and course. people of the headlines are reading Conor McGregor that beats up ex world champion. It's really bad. And for about two weeks I was you know, I was I wanna say I was depressed, I was I locked myself up, uh, I put my social media because it was mm. so bad and I didn't know how to handle it. Mm. But I had footage on my phone. But I refused to let it go out because that's not the type of guy I am. Mm-hmm. But after two weeks of all this bad publicity and, and, and people making fun of me, I was advised by, 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 by people that knew what they were doing. And they were like, Chris, you got to let this footage out. Get the real footage out there so that people can see that it wasn't one-sided. Mm-hmm. And... Um, of the thinking about it, I was like, you know what? If I want to save my name, uh, and, and and I want to, and I want to, in any chance, you know, get something good out of this, I, I didn't get paid, I didn't get anything. I gotta let this footage out. So only then, after about two and a half to three weeks, I released unedited footage. I phoned TMZ, I gave them the footage, I put it mm. on my Facebook page, and and all of a sudden, everything turned. Absolutely, Perfect. everything turned, and people were like, listen, yeah, Connor didn't beat up this guy. Right. It wasn't as one sided as Conor McGregor made it look. And and that's the best thing I've done. Now, can I tell you something? Conor McGregor doesn't keep his mouth shut for no one, okay? Mm. To this day, I have not heard anything from Conor McGregor. I haven't I haven't heard anything from his team from, from his team. I haven't gotten and, and every new supporter is asking me why is Conor McGregor not attacking you? Why is he not doing anything about it? And you know why? Because he knows that that what they did to me was wrong. 